The mail never stops. Here comes the mailman. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. When you control the mail, you control information. If there's something strange in your league, who you gonna call? Sleep on wire! Before we jump into the mail sack, first off, I'm Professor Chris, and with me I have Dirty Jobs Mike. What's going on, man? What's happening? What's happening? And Lucky Lucas, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. Good to be back with you guys. Last week was our first mail sack show of the off season, and uh, this is number two. Looking forward to it. We got the season starting. Day after our next mail sack, next Thursday. I can't believe it's already here. The process feels like it's so long and drawn out since the Super Bowl, and we're here. We've been waiting for so long. <sighs> I don't know about y'all. I still have more drafts, and I'm still very much. Oh, I have much... so many more drafts. Yeah, yeah, I think I got five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm still five. I've done six so far, still got five of them left. But – before we jump into the show here, speaking of drafts, I want to tell you guys again about the Sleeper Wire Draft Genius Draft Kit, officially sponsored by Wooten's Apparel, is officially out, has been for a couple weeks now. Go to sleeperwire.com slash draft kit to order it for the low price of $29.99. And this isn't just some run-of-the-mill, oh, people are trying to get money, blah, blah, blah. Listen to what you get. You get two different sets of redraft rankings, IDP rankings, and three different types of dynasty rankings, top 250 overall for redraft you get a full strategy guide for all different sorts of leagues rookie and veteran player profiles idp rules to win by draft day tools including auction values which was a huge thing when we put out hey what do you guys want to draft kit auction values was the biggest thing that popped up we have auction values in there we also got articles sleepers breakouts bust uh, coaching changes, strength of schedule articles, and just a ton of good stuff in there. Wooten's Apparel, thank you for sponsoring the show. Just twenty nine ninety nine. sleeperwire.com slash draft kit. Well, are you guys ready to jump right in here? Yes, indeedy. Absolutely. All right. For those of you who have tuned in so far, you can give us a call. Call in live to the show at 320-24-SLEEP. So yeah. 320-24-75337. That previous guy, call back. I'm sorry I didn't have it connected. I couldn't get you through, but uh, try back. Yes, call back. We would love to talk to you. Well, jumping in right here, we're going to be answering questions from our Sleeper Wire channel first and kicking it off. Question that we've seen a lot. Feed Zeke two one four says first pick overall should be who? Mike. I will give you a hint. It is in his name. That is my number one guy. I'm thinking he's going to end up the number one running back at the end of the season. I just think they're going to feed the beast this year. Uh, give me Ezekiel Elliott overall. First first pick every time. Even in a PPR. Even in a PPR. Yeah, I feel like they're going to throw it to him too. I feel like he's just going to be all over. I think he's got a big chip on his shoulder. Um, he's, he's my number one ranked running back. Lucas, what about you? I am a Cowboys homer. I absolutely love Zeke. I will never tell you not to go Zeke first. I do think, however, that Todd Gurley needs to be the number one overall simply because he's the safest option. All of the others have issues via personal or something going on with the team. The Cardinals, everyone forgets the Cardinals also lost their center. And which hurts David Johnson and Sam Bradford a lot. Um, obviously, Cowboys have lost their center, and Le'Veon Bell still has not reported. So I don't know what kind of shape he's in. I assume he's working out on his own, but he hasn't been working out with the team. So all of those things are factors as to why Todd Gurley is the only elite guy that doesn't have anything off the field going on or anything with the O line that's going to hurt him. Yeah, and I would agree with Todd Gurley as well, but honestly, those top four guys, you can make arguments about any one of them. That was really my one stipulation every single season when it comes to the great debates, like who do I draft, this guy or this guy? I just I avoid the top guys. Like, you know, I when I pushed a post a couple weeks ago, hey, you guys get to pick this week's great debate, and we ended up doing uh Collins versus Ajayi. I had to make a note in there, we are not debating the top four guys because honestly, 
what bad things am I going to say if I'm arguing against Todd Gurley? You know, <laughs> like, right? What negative right. does Todd Gurley have? Oh, they, they got Bell, David Johnson. They like, got all, Brandon all Cook, all so they're going to throw it to him more. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, any of those top four guys, you can make legitimate arguments for going number one overall. Honestly, it's just personal preference. It's splitting hairs. I'm going to go Gurley as well. But if you feel like going Zeke, I'm totally okay with that. Uh, D-Rex22 says, why do you care so much about James White? And I'm going to kick it off and say I don't. But I'm guessing someone on one of our shows last week maybe talked him up. It was uh, me. Might have been Hoos. That's a, that's, that's a Hoos guy. Uh, Hoos really likes James White, likes the fact that – he is a PPR guy, and he has a for sure role in that offense with not knowing what Sony Michelle status is, what Rex Burkhead's knees really like. Jeremy Hills as someone you really want to trust. So I think Hoos was saying James White was a pretty viable option in late rounds. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't care about James White one. Yep, same here. Yeah, I have no shares so far. All right. Me40 says, I am in a point per completion league where quarterbacks get one point per completion. Under this format, who are some value late round QBs I should target? So I was looking up some stats a little bit earlier, looking at completion leaders. And if we're looking at just quarterbacks who, if you take where they're going exactly right now in drafts, honestly, Ben Roethlisberger, it would be fantastic for this. I see to me, the guy who really stuck out in my head, I haven't looked up any stats on this. I just now got to the questions um, was uh, Flacco. Flacco seems to be a guy that gets a lot of completions as well in a game. So, yeah, it was, last season, uh, Flacco and Eli tied for sixth with three hundred and fifty two. Uh, completions together. Uh, Eli had 19 touchdowns. Flacco had 18. I said Roethlisberger because you can still get him really late with 360 completions, but he threw 10 more touchdowns than Eli. But looking at guys late, uh, value guys in a point per completion, Eli is certainly up there, and he's going to be even better in that format now that he has OBJ back. Uh, Let's see. Case Keenum at 325 completions. Derek Carr was top 12 in completions. Uh, Jared Goff, who you know had a great season last year, only had 296. Cam Newton only had 291. Those guys are most likely going to go earlier. And you know, you're looking at some value picks. I think Eli and Roethlisberger are great. I think those are both fantastic. Another thing I'd say right there, really quick. Sorry to cut you off there, Lucas. Sure. But the thing that I would like to say about that is that. When you're talking about quarterback completion rating, you want to be looking at garbage teams. Teams are going to be having to play a lot from behind where the quarterback is forced to just huck the ball a lot. So just look at teams you don't like the running back for, and that's the kind of team you want to grab for your quarterback. And I mean, most of those guys are going to be available in the late rounds. Go ahead, Lucas. Sorry about that. Bud. Something I would say also, though, is is look for teams that have a really good uh, receiving back because those are very high percentage throws that the quarterback can make. So any quarterback that's known to check down with a running back with good hands is probably another good guy to target. You can get Alex Smith really late, and if Chris Thompson is back, I see a lot of lot of completions coming his way. All right, there we go. Moving on here. Redberg says, I drafted Gronk in the third, but found, found Trey Burton available in the ninth. I've also got uh, Matt Ryan and Andrew Luck at quarterback. Should I try to trade Burton for some more bench piece, uh, more bench spots, or keep as Gronk insurance? I'm not sure what the quarterback situation had to do there, but uh, um, anyways, should he try to trade Burton or keep him as insurance for Gronk? Honestly, getting him in the ninth is great. A lot of people project him to be a top seven tight end this year. It's a guy you can flex. You know, you don't have to just bench him and hope Gronk or wait till Gronk gets injured and flex him. Yeah, I would. I would also add on to that, though. I would see what it, what you could get for him because there's a lot of people that are going to be hurting for tight end, and especially if he starts to prove himself, you might consider that. But what I would also want to know is how many bench spots do you have? Because if you have a backup tight end and QB, it may mean that you're pretty short in terms of depth for either wide receivers or running backs. What about you, Mike? Well, sorry, what was the question there? I got sidetracked there. I have a car alarm going off in front of my house. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Right outside my house, there's an ice cream truck right now. That's the thing. Maybe we should right just there. pause the show. I'll go get one of those baseball gloves with the baseball gumball. Right, you know what I'm talking about, right? 
Right. Yeah. I'll go oh, take yeah. my dog for a walk and we'll just come back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, Oh, Bradberg says he's got he got Gronk in the third and Burton in the ninth. Should you try to trade Burton or keep him as insurance for Gronk in case he gets hurt? Okay, so back on track. Sorry about that. That thing just zapped my mind for just a second. I completely agree with you. I think keep Burton, man, and flex him. I mean, that guy's going to be fantastic. I think he's going to be one of those tight ends that really surprises people. I know there's a lot of people on a hype train about him because he's got the talent. But, man, when I watched Zach Ertz last year get hurt or wasn't available – for about three weeks there. Trey Burton, man, he came in and he's got great hands. So I agree. I think flexing that guy sounds fantastic to me. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question. I got Wilson27 uh, talking a little trash here. He says, since Dirty Jobs Pro-Am League was the first one to finish drafting, for the record, mine is in the last uh, round right now. You're still in that draft. I oh my know, God. man. It's <laughs> taking forever. But it's almost done. I uh, got like five picks left. It's the defense round. Uh, almost there. So does that mean Dirty Jobs League has more knowledge of players or people just making stupid fast picks? And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that it's people who were excited to be in the Pro-Am and wanted to draft and get through as fast as possible. I mean, we had our delays, but those were the two that we had at nighttime when everybody was sleeping. Other than that, that thing was flying. And I mean – Everybody was getting sniped. There was a lot of conversation. It was a really good time in that pro-am, man. I had such a blast in there. Lucas, is yours filled? Yep. Ours uh, ours finished on uh, yeah, ours finished on Saturday. So okay. it went it went pretty quick. We did have some delays. Um, what we ended up doing is I just got the cell numbers of a couple of guys that had their notification turns off and I would just text them when they came up and we really went pretty quick after that yeah that was the the biggest thing in mine was that you know you get a notification for every single pick and every single time someone comments so some of the pros that are in mine like uh mitchell rince and jake seeley they both messaged me on twitter and said hey i'm turning off notifications can you let me know when it's my pick blah 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 and i'm guessing a whole bunch of people just did that so even when you're tagged sometimes you don't you can turn off that notification as well uh, so people were just taking forever, not checking to see if it was their pick and so on, which just made it really, really drag out. But I'm looking at it right now. We do have – we're in the very last round. We've got four picks left. Uh, I am the next pick up, so I'm the third to last pick. I need a defense, and I think I know who I'm going to go with, but I'm going to save that until the last question because I think we have a defense question last. So we'll come back to that one. All right, so that was Dirty Jobs' awesomely fast drafting league. Yes. Uh, next, moving back to my absolute favorite sleeper bot or sleeper username, Brady's a bitch. <laughs> Love it every single time. I hope he listens every single time. Who do you think will be the bust of the year going in the first? And he, who will be the breakout of the year going in the fifth and a half PPR? Lucas, I'll kick this one to you first. Did we lose Lucas? <laughs> Oh, sorry. Had it muted here while I was looking up fantasy football calculator. <laughs> and um, let me get over here. So in the first, oh, I'm not sure if I think any of these guys are really going to be a bust. I would probably say Julio has the best chance of being a bust of everyone going in the first round. Um, what about you guys? I feel like Saquon Barkley would be the guy that I'm – kind of looking at right here that's going in the first round that i mean we were talking about a little bit earlier uh his offensive line to me just seems so weak still i mean i know they've got a couple additions there but man that was just a dreadful line i do like a lot of the things about the giants and a lot of the direction where they're going i just don't like where they're at yet so for me drafting that guy at the 107 even though he is a beast of a man he's so talented i I just don't like where he's going. I think if he was going like middle of the second, somewhere in there, maybe even early third, I'd feel a lot better about drafting him. He's I have him on one of my teams, and that's only because it just so happened that I had to take him. So Yeah, I'm going to go with Barkley as well. All the other guys are proven. We've seen him put up RB1 or wide receiver one numbers, uh, a lot of them year in and year out. Uh, Saquon Barkley is just – he's a rookie. That's all it is, and you have to take him sixth or seventh overall, and that's – really really high i would say he's got the best chance to bust now will he i don't necessarily think he's going to but 
he's got the best chance. What about in the fifth round, the best chance to break out? Now, in the fifth round, we've got a whole bunch of guys who have broken out historically, uh, but maybe someone who is going to outperform their fifth round value. I mean, I see several guys in here that I like that could almost every person in here, I think, could be very big this year. Carlos Hyde, he could easily be the number one back by the end of the year. Jimmy Graham, I think, has a big year. Carry on could have a monster of a year. Wait, you say Hyde could be the number one overall? Number four, he'll be the number one back for Cleveland between oh, Duke, Duke okay. Chubb okay. and him. Yeah, um, it wouldn't surprise me at all for Carlos oh, Hyde I, to do that. I agree. Hyde's the guy this season. And if he stays healthy, he could be an RB1. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree with that, too. But honestly, there's the only person that I don't really like in this group going where he's going. Actually, there's two. is Rex Burkhead and Russell w- and um, Allen Robinson. I'm, yeah, and I, Burkhead is snuck up there, especially in – are you looking at standard leagues? Yeah, I'm just in standard. Okay, he, he snuck up there with the Sony Michelle injury and news like that. I think Dion Lewis in the fifth round can turn out to be a fantastic pick for you. I agree. That's who I was actually looking at right there was Dion Lewis. I just – I mean, anything you happens way on Henry. the same page here too. Yeah. Henry goes down. Lewis is an automatic RB1. Right. Now you can say this the opposite as well with Lewis's injury history. But if I'm looking for a guy in the fifth round who could break out, yeah, that's who I'm looking at. All right. Well, speaking of Carryon Johnson, I'll let you take this one first, Lucas. Bradberg says, what's your thoughts on Carryon Johnson? I took him in the sixth, but looking at him as my flex right now gives me buyer's remorse. Why should he not have buyer's remorse? So I have Carryon in several of my leagues. I'm not forced to use him in all of them. I love having him on my bench, but he is a guy that he – Runs hard, he looks for the holes, he is patient, and he can also catch. Carrion Johnson could have a huge year. Um, I could see a one-two punch with Carrion Johnson and LeGarrette Blunt, and we something that we haven't seen from Detroit. Um, I think Carrion could be kind of a poor man's version of what Alvin Kamara was last year. Is I think. Carry on will get enough touches to be relevant and should be a pretty good flex play for you. Yeah, I'd agree. He's got a fifth round ADP right now, so getting him in the sixth, I mean, that's a value. Yeah, you got him pretty, you got him a little later than his ADP's representing. Um, I'm really not on board with the Detroit backfield, but I mean, if I'm going to get on board with any one guy on this team, it's going to be Carry on Johnson. Yeah, if I had to have, have one of them, for sure, it's going to be him. Yeah, now, I wouldn't take him in the fifth at his current ADP. No, me neither. That's crazy talk to me, too. I still don't know about the sixth. If he fell to the seventh, probably in the eighth, definitely. Uh, Fifth is a little bit too rich for me, though. Yeah, same here. All right. Another question by Wilson. He asked us a few of them here. said, would you draft Alex Collins over LaShawn McCoy in any style of draft? And as of right now, with no bad news about McCoy, the whole thing seems to just – I don't, I don't want to call it a hoax or made up, but I mean, if if it was serious, I feel like we would have heard something by now. I'm taking LaShawn McCoy over Collins every time. And I like Collins. Yeah. I'm, Go ahead, Mike. I'm, I'm still taking Collins. I just I, – I have more faith in his future right now. LaShawn McCoy just has me scared. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm, I'm conflicted with this one because I've been someone who really likes McCoy. Um, but just given how things played out with Zeke last year, I'm nervous about the NFL just bringing out random uh, suspensions during the middle of the year. And then also, McCoy's also already dealing with a groin injury. He's always had kind of ligament issues, like lingering ones that don't necessarily cause him to miss games, but do cause him to miss series during games, which is one of the most frustrating things. I think it's tough. It pains me to say this, but I think I would go Alex Collins just because I'm more wow. sure. Yeah. I what think I what would. if you knew there was not going to be any league repercussion? If I knew that for a fact, I would take McCoy. But just because that is there, it's enough because like they're they're close enough to me that I have McCoy probably two spots higher. Uh, with, without that, I would have him two spots better. But just that lingering issue to me, give me the stability. Give me the stability of someone that doesn't have this injury issue and an off the field issue. Now, suppose you're looking at you, – you've got a team that's something like 
let's say Alvin Kamara and Jordan Howard, right? Those are your first two picks. Yeah. Third round rolls around. The best wide receiver is Adam Thielen and Amari Cooper. Uh, are you taking LaShawn McCoy over Alex Collins there when you've already got two stud running backs? No. At that point, I would take the upside of McCoy okay. just because he's an elite talent. But I think if you're going for your second running back or, heaven forbid, your first at that point, I think you want to get the you want to get the weekend week out safer. I I know this guy's going to be on the field getting me some points and he's going to have some big weeks. Yeah, I can do that. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Doctor Deep Sleeper says there's always a breakout or two through the first few weeks of the season that no one really sees coming. Uh, that no one really sees coming. My question: Which player slash players do you see having an early breakout? that no one is talking about. And it's a guy who I have been saying for months is going to be the wide receiver one on his team. And if he comes out and does this the very first week, I think he, people are going to go crazy on the waiver wire for this guy. And that is Paul Richardson. I think he's going to be the best wide receiver on the Chiefs this season. I don't think it's Jamison Crowder. I don't think it's Josh Doxson. I think in a most likely high-scoring division game against the Chargers in week one, Actually, no, I am completely wrong. Not the Chargers. They are on the Redskins, not the Chiefs. <laughs> against the Cardinals. My bad. I was looking at the uh, looking at the wrong matchup. Oh, that's even better. Against the Cardinals. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think he, he could put up a big week, and then people are going to go crazy about him. Now, it might end up being like one of those Kenny Galladay things where, oh, two touchdowns, sucks the rest of the season. But I'm calling Paul Richardson for that one. Okay. Mike, do you have one? I, I do. I'm just sitting over here thinking about Paul Richardson, and I'm like, man, that would be kind of crazy. I mean, I feel like he'll be the wide receiver one on that team, but I just don't feel like it's going to be anything spectacular. But I can see it being like an early breakout, somebody you like the value in early. But the guy who came to mind for me was Calvin Ridley. It's I just what I've seen with that guy and how he's translated to the NFL. And then on the other side, you're going to have to worry about Julio Jones. I think that guy is going to prove to be a headache right away. And he's, I mean, so you're not going to be ready for this guy right out the gate. You're going to have to start game planning him in because he's going to go off, I feel like, in the first week. That's that's fair. I like Calvin Ridley a lot as a talent. He reminds me quite a bit of Antonio Brown, if I can be frank, when I watch him run. Right. But the only thing about it is that people are forgetting that Muhammad Sanu is really, really good. Like Mohamed Sanu is a really good wide receiver that nobody is talking about. So with having Devonta Freeman, Julio Jones, and um, why am I spacing on and Tevin Coleman uh, there? There's there's a lot of mouths to feed, and then also Mohamed Sanu. So that's the only thing holding me back for Calvin Ridley is total usage. And but I'm gonna switch over and my guy that I've been talking about for the last couple of months now and has a bigger opening now with Marquise Lee down is Keelan Cole. Keelan oh, Cole yeah. <laughs> is going undrafted and he this the, for the last five weeks of the season he was the number three wide receiver last Lucas, year. Lucas I'm gonna stop you right here because we have a question about Cole and okay. I'll let you jump back in when we get sure. there. Sure. So Keelan Cole is my guy to uh, uh the <laughs> voice to break out. There we go. <laughs> you can finish your thought when we get to that question. Sure. <laughs> All right, Wilson27, another question. In the 10-team standard I drafted in this order, Fournette, Hopkins, Adams, Mixon, rate by grade. And I'm going to give that a solid A-. minus. Okay. Standard uh, league, Fournette, Hopkins, Adams, and Mixon, that's yards, that's touchdowns. Yeah, I love Fournette. I love Hopkins. It kills me when I see Hopkins drop to the second round and someone get that value there, because Hopkins is my number one right wide receiver for the year. And Devontae Adams is a beautiful, it's like the best wide receiver two you could ask for. And I love, I love Mixon as a talent that his usage makes me nervous on that team. That's, I wish I was in this league, man. How do you have Hopkins <laughs> in the second, in the second? I mean, I've picked Hopkins as early as the fourth round. I, I was just in a league the other night where we were drafting and the guy just, I mean, this is, a, this should be a lesson to everybody, right? Discuss the rules ahead of time. Always make sure. And luckily I asked the guy, I said, Hey, are we doing anything different? I thought you said, cause it was a standard league. He finally decided they were going to go to PPR last I talked to him. So I said, Hey, so this is PPR, right? And he goes, no, it's one point per first down if they catch it. 
And then he goes, and then it's a uh, half a point for a first down if they if they run it. And so immediately I shifted gears. Hey. I'm like, oh, oh, we got a call. Sounds like we got a call. No, incorrect. My, my money's on Wilson. Incorrect. No call. No call. All right. You guys remember that well, show sounded- Crank Yankers on Comedy Central back in the day? I do, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, before we move on here, this question reminded me of uh, my Pro-Am draft. I'm, I've been a big – Big advocate of you need to take one of those stud running backs in the first two rounds. I don't like the zero white or the zero RB strategy this year, but sometimes you just got to take what the draft gives you. And I was at the tenth pick. These are twelve team PPR leagues. I was at the tenth pick, and I really wanted Melvin. He went way before me. Uh, actually, Christian McCaffrey went right before me, which I thought was a first round. I got Hopkins at the tenth pick, and then it went Fournette. Cook, Freeman, and then, oh, one other guy. I forget who else it was. But then it dropped back to me. All the stud running backs are gone. I started out the Pro-Am with Hopkins and Julio. I'm okay with that. (laughs) Yeah, that's not a bad start, right? Yeah, if you're going to go zero RB, that's the way to go. Yeah. we In Scott Fishbowl, we have – JM and I have Hopkins and OBJ. OBJ fell to like – the eighth pick of the second round somehow. Damn. Yeah. Who did you guys take as your first two picks in your pro-ams? Because uh, Lucas, you and uh, Dirty Jobs are both commissioners of a pro-am league as well. We we are. I had the third overall pick in mine, and I took Zeke. And then at pick 210, I took Devonta Adams. He fell pretty late. He fell to 210? Wow. Yeah, so I started out Elliott and Adams. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great start. What about you, Mike? Uh, my very first pick, I was in the nine spot and Hopkins fell all the way to the nine and I got him and then it shifted around and I got Dalvin cook. That's a good start too. Love it. Not bad. Love it. Well, enough about our teams. Let's go ahead and get back to the listeners teams here. Sandman (laughs) 1025 says, which two quarterbacks do I, or do you start in week one? Alex Smith, Case Keenum and Mitchell Trubisky. And I'm going to go with the two guys who we've seen put up big games last year and that is Alex Smith and Case Keenum. I want to see it out of Trubisky before I put him in my starting lineup. See, and I'm on the opposite side. I think Case Keenum and Mitchell Trubisky, for me, I like the outlook for what I see out of the Bears, Um, and I do not like what I'm seeing out of Washington right now. So for me, it would be Mitchell Trubisky and Case Keenum. And Lucas, I'm assuming, is going to go Alex Smith and Trubisky so that nobody is answering this guy's question. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think – I think I have to go Alex Smith and Case Keenum. Yeah, I'm not even a big Case Keenum fan. I don't think he's that good of a quarterback, but we did see big games from him last year when he had a great team. And Denver, on paper, has a great offense. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas, Royce Freeman. Sutton. Sutton, yeah, on paper, they should be a good offense. I think he could put up some big games for you uh, in a two-quarterback league. I just want to see it out of Trubisky first. Yep, I agree. I want All right, show, tre- show me the money. Yep. Trevor Joe 36 says, is Dalvin Cook going to start? And I'm going to say yes. Absolutely. No question. He got a carry. I think, did he just get one carry in the third preseason game? He got two for like a yard, but I'm okay. not worried whatsoever. He played. That's all we cared about. He He played. He played. He's good to go. He's going to start. Uh, this is your chance here, Lucas. Wilson27 says, should I drop Michael Gallup for Keelan Cole in a standard? Uh, that This hurts me because I'm a cowboy homer, and I, with all my heart, want to see Gallup just absolutely replaced as Bryant. Um, this is this is tough for me. I, I have them pretty much neck and neck. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's so well, why tough. don't you finish your Keelan Cole thoughts? Yeah, number, so number three wide receiver over the last th- number one wide receiver over the last three weeks. He was he was the number three wide receiver over the last five weeks. Well, that's what it was last year. From weeks like twelve to sixteen, he was the number three wide receiver. And he made that, Blake Bortles into the number one quarterback, didn't he? During that during that point in time, yeah, and having Leonard Fournette there and healthy, and having an absolutely monster defense with one of the easiest schedules of any of the teams, and now Marquise Lee gone, I I like Didi Westbrook. I watched him in college. He was he was good. He's not 
a game breaker in the NFL. And I love Dante Moncrief. I think he could be a big red zone target, but I think Keelan Cole is going to be the guy. And I hope Gallup is the guy also. So it's very difficult for me to tell you to drop him. But if this means anything, I have Keelan Cole in five out of my six leagues that I've currently drafted in. Yeah, I'll say this in uh, my Pro-Am League. It was Jake Seeley's turn in the 11th round. And normally Keelan Cole's been going like 15th round or later or com- or, or completely undrafted. Yep. And it was it was Jake's pick. Then we get the alert. Marquise Lee on the IR. Ten minutes later, Seeley picks Keelan Cole in the 11th round. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are going to think this is funny. In our Pro-Am, I have Keelan Cole and Michael Gallup on my team. Oh, wow. So if you had nice. to drop one, would you drop? Uh, Corey Coleman. Because <laughs> I'm actually about to drop <laughs> Corey Coleman right now for uh, Buck Allen, which way is on the way to dodge the question. Yeah, prob- um, probably. Right, Mike, who would you rather have, Gallup or Keelan Cole? I feel like Keelan Cole will get more usage. Yeah, I feel the Although same I, way. I, I, I do like Gallup, but man, I, I like Keelan Cole just a hair more. Let's go ahead it's and funny, move on. I have Keelan Cole in my uh, pro am too. I had to nice. Literally- nice. R. Summers says start one for week one and a half PPR. Sony Michelle, carry on Johnson, or Jonathan Williams. He is the Mark Ingram owner. Thanks in advance. You are welcome in advance. Uh, scratch Jonathan Williams off that list. And Sony Michelle might not get that much playing time if he's still injured. So I'm going to say carry on Johnson. Yep, by default. Yep. Yep, I'll go carry on. All right. CJ2K, uh, Evan. Or CJ2 Kevin. That's probably how you pronounce that. (laughs) (laughs) Says second year of a keeper league. So the first year, this is the first year that they selected keepers. They are kept at a uh, penalty draft of um, a one round penalty. They can't keep anybody from the first two rounds last year. They do not know their draft spot until 15 minutes before the draft. How do you prepare for a keeper draft like that? It seems to be impossible to mock for, and then there's anything in the draft kit that would help. Well, first off, the draft kit is going to have all sorts of rankings in there. It's going to have values and uh, even mention some stuff about keepers. But when it comes to your specific league, well, we don't really have something that's going to cover everybody's individual league that's going to be helpful there. But – We do have tips and articles in there for all sorts of redraft leagues, including keeper leagues. What I would suggest doing personally is mock drafting from every single draft spot. You didn't mention how many teams there were, but if there's 12 teams, do at least two different mock drafts from each spot and try to visualize which players are going to be kept or which players are from the first few rounds are not going to be kept. You know who's going to be available for you. So if you that that will kind of help you prep that way if you can just assume, okay, well this roster, they're they're probably gonna keep this guy. In this roster, they're probably gonna keep this guy in this round. Just trying to keep all that straight. It's it's a lot of work. You're gonna have to be thinking about it quite a bit, uh, especially since you don't know. But mock draft from every single position, consider all of the keeper possibilities. See, and another thing I can say, like for me with a keeper redraft or a keeper league, I try to look at it more like a redraft league uh, with my two isolated people that I can get. Now, one thing I've learned from the other draft I just did the other day is make sure you keep an eye towards the end of that draft. People like Hunter Henry, Darius G- Guise, uh Guys. guys like – guys, sorry. I always pronounce his name wrong. I like – I want to call him Juice. But uh, – That's Landry. Those – yeah, but you got the guy sitting right there at the end of these drafts. Pick them up. So next year when Hunter Henry's back to full health, you could pick that guy up in the 16th, 17th, 18th round, things like that. Yeah, that's one thing I'm going to be doing in one of my uh, drafts on Labor Day. It's a keeper league where you you have to keep, draft a player and keep him the entire year, and you keep him at a two-round penalty. I'm going to take Geis in the last round. I know he's injured. There's no IR spot in that league, I don't think. I don't care. I'm going to take him in the last round. I'm going to burn that bench spot so I can have Geis in the 14th next season. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Just all about prepping for the future. And if you get to keep guys who are picked up off waivers, make sure you are watching for when the stud players are dropped. I've got a keeper league where I did not draft OBJ last year. Didn't take him. He wasn't on my team. 
Someone dropped him after his injury. Someone dropped Alvin Cook after his injury. So I had choices between Melvin, OBJ, Cook, and Thielen. And I ended up keeping Thielen in the ninth, because that was our two-round penalty, and then OBJ in the second. And I picked up OBJ off waivers. And I was I was debating between OBJ in the second or Melvin in the first. I kept OBJ in the second and still drafted Melvin Gordon in the first. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so watch for people dropping those stud players who have season-ending injuries and pick them up because you'll be able to – most likely be able to keep them next season, and people just don't think about that. Absolutely. All right, Coco Packs, moving on here, says, what is a good streaming tight end and defense for week one? And uh, my next pick in the Pro-Am, it's still not out because we have a four-hour clock. I really, really like the Lions. This are for week one. They've got a really good matchup playing the Jets on Monday Night Football. Uh, But they were taken earlier, so the Lions would be my pick. I also think the Titans are a solid pick uh, playing against the Dolphins. So one of my, like, the team I really am looking at for defense is Denver because I feel like Denver's going to do some crushing against Seattle. And then for tight end, I was, uh, Kyle Rudolph. I think we're going to see we're gonna see the Kirk Cousins-Kyle Rudolph connection relatively quickly. Yeah, but to be fair, he's talking about streaming players, and those guys are not going to be available. You have a call. Oh, fair enough. Sorry. Fair enough. I read that question wrong then. I was looking at the uh, <laughs> Say that again. Like, yeah, the schedules. Again, no shit you're going to start Denver and Kyle Rudolph. <laughs> right. <laughs> Steve, te- what do you got? You have a telephone call. All right. Oh, excellent. Let's do it. Caller, what's your name? Hey, I'm Joe. How are you guys? Good. Yeah, how are you doing, bro? Good, good. I'm actually heading to the draft in about an hour. I was wondering oh, if yeah. you guys can help me. I got the sixth pick in a 10-team PPR league. Should I go Kamara, Barkley, or Gordon? Gordon, hands down for me. Um, Kamara. You Kamara should go Kamara for me, too. You should, yeah. you should go Kamara there. I- I've got Gordon and Kamara back to back in my rankings in PPR, and I I was switching back and forth between them for a while. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either right. guy. Uh, I I just Gordon with the rushing floor and still the touchdowns, and they want him even more involved in the passing game when he had fifty plus catches last season. Uh, it's Melvin right. for me. Yeah, you got to think Kamara finished what the number three running yep. back in PPR last year. And he didn't even really get the go ahead until they traded Peterson in week four. So I can only imagine what he's going to do with the go ahead without Peterson or Ingram for the first four games. And then only really having Ingram to kind of work alongside him. Um, so it's Kamara for me in a PPR. Yeah, honestly, this is a good problem to have. <laughs> right. <laughs> And in the fifteen now, pick, with the fifteen pick, you guys think I should go running back or wide receiver? Best available. I I would go best, best available there because there's a chance if like OBJ or uh, Hopkins were to still be there, I would absolutely take one of those. If one of if like Dalvin Cook is still there, I would take Dalvin Cook. Um, the next person in line I would take would probably be Keenan Allen. Um, but I would definitely okay. look to see just who the best talent on the board is. Yeah, I mean, you're most likely going to be looking at guys like Michael Thomas and Devonta Adams. Maybe Dalvin Cook is still there. Uh, Freeman and Howard. But if you go Gordon or Kamara, either one of those guys, and Adams and Keenan and Thomas are there, I would take one of those over Freeman and Howard and Mixon and McKinnon, all of those guys. Um, yep. and Michael Thomas would be my number one out of those three wide receivers. Not mine. I love the yeah. consistency of it. Keenan Allen would be mine for a PPR and a standard I would go Thomas, but Keenan Allen's going to get probably 15 more catches than Thomas. <laughs> and I like Devontae Adams because I really like his situation this uh, year. So no help there on your second one, but I no. mean, we're all leaning more towards a, an elite wide receiver right there. Yeah, so if you take Gordon or Kamara and then there's a big running back run and you're left with Adams, uh, Keenan, and Thomas – uh, flip a coin, man. Those are all three great. I've got them, what, I think five, six, and seven in my rankings. So great options there. And you would you would take them over Christian McCaffrey or you would go? I, I would because they're elite. Now. Christian McCaffrey is a great running back and he'll do well in PPR. But mm-hmm. take one of the elite talent wide receivers to pair with right. your running back. I would take Hands him over down. McCaffrey, Perfect. not over Cook, Fournette, and Hunt, though. Yep. Same. There, there's Same. a tier there. Perfect. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, All right, hey, good, good luck, luck man. Draft, man. Let us know who you get. Thank you guys so Come much. Come on, Sleeperbot, and say something. 
Yeah, or tweet yeah, us at Sleeperwire Show. I'm on there at Seymour Sleeperwire. Mike is Dirty or Dr. Kane 21, and Lucas is Sleeperwire LBB, I believe. Yep. Sleeperwire Perfect. I'll add you guys right now on Sleeperbot. All, All right. right. See you. Oh, yeah, All man. Right. Good Thanks, luck. Guys. Thank you. All right, so for those of you listening, you uh, heard that we you, we can accept calls from you guys calling in. So if you were miss, missing the first part of the show, I'm stumbling all over my words right now. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip of beer. and uh, All right, we're all good. Call in at 320, and I lost the phone number. Mike, you want to finish it? I, too, lost the phone number. I can pull it up real right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in, man this is a sloppy show what, that missing well, that intro here's, um, I'm all right gonna, 320 yeah, 24 go. sleep there we go it's a different phone number than we used last season to be fair yeah that's the problem i remember yeah. the one from last year yep yeah still got that one on lock all right last question that we have in the sleeper wire channel in the sleeper app this was an email question that we got i believe yesterday we responded hey we're just going to answer this one on the show so I hope you guys, uh, Mike and Lucas, are reading along here. This is kind of a long one right here, so guys, just bear with us. 12-team, standard league. They're allowed to keep two keepers in the round they took him last year. He's got five that he's considering. Deshaun Watson in the 15th, Kenyon Drake in the 16th, McCaffrey in the second, Keenan Allen in the third, Jaguars D in the last round, which would be the 18th. He's leaning towards Watson in the 15th and Drake in the 16th. Uh, and then uh, blah, blah, blah. He also listed the Jags defense because last year they outscored every running back and wide receiver except Todd Gurley. So what that tells me is that they've got some weird scoring settings in there where defenses are just overpowered for sure. Right. It's probably Yahoo. Could it's- be. Yeah. The Yahoo regular setup has crazy scoring for defenses. Yep. Um, he also says he does not know what pick he has and won't know until all keepers are in. So I'll kick this one off here, and I'm going to start off by once again giving my hot take that I think Frank Gore is going to have more fantasy points at the end of the season than Kenyon Drake. I know that's an unpopular opinion. I certainly know that's unpopular with other analysts and especially with people on Facebook who just – Facebook is just the – Freaking worst. <laughs> but I'm going to go with Kenyon Drake in the 16th and Keenan Allen in the third. Funny enough, those are actually my two. You can get the Jags D in like the 13th or 14th round if you really no. want them. They'll go in the 8th or 9th. Uh, maybe. 12 team? Oh, yeah, for sure. Maybe. Um, mine, he, because he, he's in an 18, he's in an 18 round league. Right. Yeah, 18 rounds. So I don't know. I think five or six rounds is is early uh, for that. But I would still go Kenyon Drake and Keenan Allen if it were me. What about you, Mike? I, I wouldn't go Keenan Allen. I do like Keenan Allen in the third. Um, honestly, I mean, if you got the higher scoring defense, I really don't mind the Jags in the 18th. And I mean, just because you're not going to get them. I mean, those guys are going in the 12th, 13th. They're the number one drop on the defenses. And I really kind of expect them to even do better than they did last year. So with that said, I think I I really, as weird as it is, I feel like Jags D in the 18th is a pretty good steal. And then I'd top that off also with the Kenyon Drake 16th round pick or the Deshaun Watson 15th round. I mean, I really, either one of those, you're getting incredible value on a player that has a, a decent chance of doing what they have done before again. Now, I don't think Deshaun Watson comes out there and does what he did last, you know, I mean, the 80 touchdowns in three games or whatever he had, the incredible pace he was on. I don't think he repeats that performance, but I think he showed that he's got talent in the NFL and he's got the readability in the NFL uh, uh, to be able to succeed. And I feel like Kenyon Drake, unfortunately, I'm one of the analysts who was always on the fence about this, but I really think Kenyon Drake is fitting into form. He's looked really good this preseason to me. Uh, I feel like he's a steal at the 16th round. Yeah, and especially in a keeper league where you keep them the round that you drafted them, Frank Gore only signed a one-year deal. Right. Can, if Gore's gone next year, which he very easily could be if they decide not to sign him and bring him back for his age 36 season, then you have the starting running back who looked, he was an RB one when he played last season, looked really, really good. You get an RB one in the 16th round. Yeah. I, I think he's gotta be a guy that you keep no matter what Drake has to be kept. Yeah. We all agreed on that one guy. And then, like I said, too, 
to me, I mean, you can toss up Jags or Deshaun Watson. I think both of those are just incredible value for what you're getting out of them. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and move over to the main chat in the Sleeper app. Pac-Man X says Doug Martin or Geronimo Allison. And I might be leaning more towards Allison if Cobb actually gets traded, but with how many miles Marshawn Lynch has on his body, honestly, either one of these guys, you're taking them as a super late-round flyer anyway. I think I would take Doug Martin. I got to go. For me, I'll just go quick and say it's the upside of Geronimo Allison. I don't see Doug Martin getting enough touches to be relevant or lasting, even if he does. And Geronimo could be a favorite target of Aaron Rodgers. Right. I agree. I like Geronimo Allison as well there. All right. J. Rue 21, Kamara, Gordon, or Barkley. This might be the guy who called in. Yep. And um, I said yeah. Kamara. Chris said Gordon. And Mike I, said Kamara. Yep. There we go. Uh, let's see. T. Friss 92 says, what are your top five sleepers for this season? Think back when David Johnson and Kamara were nobodies. And top five, uh, I don't know if I have a top five list available right now. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Fantasy Football Calculator. I'm going to look at their ADP list and just quickly pick five names. And I'll go ahead and rattle these off while Mike and Lucas are pulling theirs up. Uh, number one, Dak Prescott going in the 14th round. He was really, really, really good the first half of last season when he had Zeke and Tyron Smith. And, you know, without both of those guys, he was bad. He's got them both back. I think Dak is being disrespected in drafts this year. I think he's going to be great. Talked about Paul Richardson earlier. I think Paul Richardson is a sleeper. Oh, let's pick a couple different ones here. Uh, Chris Godwin could have a breakout season. I do like Cameron Meredith in New Orleans, provided that he does actually make it back onto the field. And then when it comes to running backs, I'm going to say Corey Clement, even though I have been leaning more towards liking Ajayi for the first time ever in my life. You know, he's got that knee injury right now. So I think Clement could play a big role early on in the season. Mike, what about you? I also like Corey Clement. Uh, He's just one of the guys that I feel like can take over that backfield. I'm just not a big Jay Ajayi fan. Uh, another guy that's kind of going around in that same area, Ty Montgomery. I really feel like, uh, especially with Aaron Jones out for right boo. now, <laughs> I'm getting booed because I love Jamal Williams too. He's just going a lot earlier, right? Jamal's but I like man. Ty, I like Ty Montgomery just as a supplement, just to keep the guy because I feel like he will still be productive, and I think he'll be productive enough over the rest of the running backs anyways. Uh, another guy that's kind of climbing up there, DJ Moore. Um, I feel like he's better than Devin Funches. I think he might just prove that right away. To me, the wide receiver position isn't a position that you really got to worry about. Uh, I mean, you got to learn your plays, right? But you only have to learn specific routes when you're the receiver. You don't really have to worry about like the intricacies of running the ball, operating the offense. You just got to know what route to run and when. And so, I mean, the rest of that comes from natural talent, which he has plenty of. So I really think DJ Moore might be a guy that's kind of creeping back there on the backside that you can pick up that's going to really just light things up. All right, we got another question from J. Rue here. Ooh, says, you didn't want me to take that, did you? Okay. No, I didn't. Sorry. I completely forgot you hadn't said anything yet. Lucas, who are your top five sleepers this season? <laughs> so... I am not a give it or not. Hey, it's fair. I know you wanted to keep keep those for yourself. You heard about it before we got on the air. You wanted to keep them. I understand. Um, I don't like Lamar Miller. As soon as Deonta Foreman comes back, he is the better running back, and he's going to end up being the guy for the Houston Texans. Uh, everyone knows Hunter Henry got hurt for the Chargers. They don't really have anyone replacing him except for a little guy known as Mike Williams, which was a rookie for them last year who got injured. He's six four and a freak athlete. He's going to be a huge red zone target for them. Like we already that. talked about Keelan Cole, which is a must own in all formats right now. And then another guy that's kind of getting overlooked in the middle rounds is Chris Thompson. Uh, with the Adrian Peterson siding, signing, I see Adrian Peterson's uh, draft value going way up, and everyone's just seeing him. The news is that Chris Thompson's going to be a go at the very beginning. People were talking about it would be November, but no, it really looks like he, he's going to be a go at the very beginning. And without guys there, people forget that Chris Thompson was a top six running back in standard. And he was the number four running back in PPR before he went down. Yeah. He just happened to break off a couple monster plays though. That's I think fair. his numbers were skewed that I mean, maybe, but 
he looked really good and was difficult to tackle on the open field. So those are a few for me. All right. And Frank Gore. Don't forget him. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm a, All I'm right. A, I'm a great guy. JRU21 says, should I pick up Allison? And if yes, should I tr- drop Hearns or Meredith? And it's a PPR. I would not drop either one of those guys for Geronimo Allison. Me either. I feel like I'd drop Cameron Meredith for Geronimo oh. Allison. I like the upside of Meredith with Breeze. I yeah. don't. I don't like. I just don't like the wide receiver set up in New Orleans. But I mean, that's. I don't like Michael Thomas either. So wow, man, next year GTF, you don't like. Uh, you're next, you're gonna tell <laughs> me you don't like Drew Breeze. I'm not a really big like. Oh, uh, okay. All right. He's the only <laughs> player to throw for over five thousand yards more than th- th- uh, three times, or he's done it three times. Led the league in completions right. last mean, season. And I mean, oh. trust me, I, I love him like a few years ago, but once they established a running game, he, I mean, he just wasn't the same fantasy guy. He was still successful last year. He had a great team, but I mean, they've really stepped things up so much on the defense and they've stepped so much things. So, I mean, like Alvin Kamara, I mean, he's just going to feast on that team this year. Small so, sample size know. here. Small sample sample size. They ran the ball a lot in the red zone. I agree. But we don't know that they're not going to switch it up a little bit, start throwing some screen passes, use old Benjamin Watson, and then start getting some of these other guys like Traquan Smith involved with the with the slot route in the red zone. So we'll see. I think we see a little bounce from uh, from Sir Breeze. I hope so. I'd like to because, I mean, like I said, I like him and everything. Don't get me wrong. I think he's fantastic. He's definitely very talented and very good at fantasy football. Just I don't feel like that's the trend the team went. All right, let's move on here. Ozzy54 says, in one of my leagues, I ended up with Amari Cooper, Marshawn Lynch, and Jared Cook. Is that too much of a Raider stack? And I think you can drop Jared Cook. Um, or Or at least see what else is on your – yeah, there has to be something else there. Mike, what about you? Say those names again one more time. Sorry, I'm not he, seeing where you're getting these at. He's got Amari Cooper, Marshawn Lynch, and Jared Cook. Is that too much of a Raiders stack? I think yes. yes. Yeah, you don't want that many Raiders. I mean, there's teams that you can get away with that on, but that's not one of them. All right, there we go. Ozzy, thanks for tuning in. Rung Ziggy says, drafting 12th in a 12-team standard league. Who are you targeting with back-to-back picks? So 12-team standard, I'm going to take this back to looking at the ADP and fantasy football calculator. Let me move this over to standard. For the record, for those of you who are new to fantasy football, standard means non-PPR. I know that PPR has moved towards being the new standard. <laughs> So uh, yeah, standard means non PPR. So in a standard league, looking at the twelfth, twelfth uh, pick, if Kareem Hunt happens to make it there, he's going uh, overall as the one, the one ten. But you can get Hunt and OBJ, even Hopkins and OBJ in a standard. I know that's two wide receivers, but those are still wide receivers with guaranteed yards. So. Uh, for me, I'm going a different route, and I'm going to target like Fournette and Cook or Gordon and Hunt. I would take two of those four running backs, whoever is there. You guys want to hear an awesome sound? Yes. Ah, yes. oh, you're drinking a soda. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sparkling water. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly yeah, think- what it is. That tastes like a hazy IPA. But I think that DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr. is fine on that turn right there. I really like those two guys. And in standard, that doesn't bother me at all because both those guys have a high tendency of scoring as well. Yeah, I mean, people are probably going to go running back heavy according to ADPs. In the first 10 picks, 10 straight running backs aside from Antonio Brown going at the uh, seventh overall in a standard. So if you're at the end, maybe you can get OBJ and Dalvin Cook. That'd be awesome. Yep. Love it. Hard to go wrong with the 12th overall pick this year. That's a beautiful spot to be in. You get two of the top 13 players you literally can't miss. Yeah, yep. it's a, I'd actually rather go late than early in most drafts. Although I'm finding in this draft, I mean, you're not getting those top four running backs. I get sad about that right away. I don't know. I'm, I think, I think that's. I think that some of these guys going at the – it's going to be inevitable, right? Like nothing's predictable, but some of the running backs that are going at the end of the first round are for sure going to be – I'm going to say three of them are going to be in the top five. Yeah, I'd agree. Let's go ahead and move on here. Once again, guys, if you want to call into the show and ask a question live, it's 320-24-SLEEP. 
or 320-247-5337. Cody Mason, 18, says, should I try to trade Doug Baldwin? If so, for who? Must be a wide receiver. Right now, with the news on Baldwin's, uh, it's, it's his leg, right? With the news on his injury, uh, kind of nagging him. I don't know if you're going to get a proper return for Doug Baldwin. Try to. I agree. See you, if you, you can should get try anything to. for his name. Maybe you can get Diggs or Hilton. Uh, and I, I would oh. trade Doug Baldwin for both of those guys. But so I, I, if you're playing with people who know what they're doing, who've been doing research all offseason, they know about Doug Baldwin's injury, you're not going to get much for him. I think if you're playing with knowledgeable people, he's certainly a hold right now. I'd even trade him for Landry. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't trade him for Landry. Hilton I like, Ooh. but the other one I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So is that – should we have some sort of uh... – Little season bet there, Baldwin versus yeah. Lander. Dude, I'm gonna have to go move into your house and be your maid for like six months <laughs> if I keep if I keep betting with you. So. <laughs> no confidence, huh? Okay. Oh, I mean, Lucas, you have to buy him a French maid outfit, and Mike, we need a different selfie of you in it every single day. It'll look that a lot like good. a. It'll look like a lot like a Zeke jersey. This is the dirty, <laughs> dirty jobs. You have women come to your house, don't you? Uh, there are women that are here from time to time. See, yeah, you probably don't want that then. That's probably <laughs> not going to be no good. <laughs> Me in a French made outfit, that's an immediate That's immediate turnaround. They're going to run. That's All fair. Right. All right, let's, let's get that <laughs> out of our brains. and uh, Let's go ahead and get back to this. Let's look at some ADPs, though, next to Doug Baldwin. So we got we mentioned Hilton and Diggs. We've also got Tyreek Hill going a few picks ahead of him. Uh, going behind him, we've got Adam Thielen, Amari Cooper, Larry Fitzgerald. Would you trade – Baldwin for any of those three? Thielen, Cooper, Fitz? All of them. I don't want Baldwin this year. I have zero I feel the same way. I like, I mean, I'm just now just trying to move, make a move for Hilton with him because I had to keep him because of the late round value I was getting with him at the 16th. But I'm like, this is a new keeper league. I can just adjust things. I don't really care where I'm landing at right now. Uh, I'm trying to build up for the future because this guy's made just a huge mess with this team. What about so, Josh I mean, Gordon and Demarius Thomas? I like both of those guys more than I like Baldwin this year. Yeah, me too. I'm still a little – I was so in love with Demarius going into this, and Sutton scares me. He's good. I'm, I'm, yeah, worried, he's gonna, I'm worried he's going to eat into Demarius' targets. All right, there you go. A bunch of trade targets there. A bunch of guys that we like who are going after Doug Baldwin who you might be able to trade him for. Boston says, better bench stash for upside, Mike Williams or John Brown from the Ravens, and why? Mike Williams, the talent is insane. John Brown, the the sickle cell trait just keeps him out of games way too often for me. I do like John Brown this year. I do think he's a sleeper that maybe I should have brought up in my top five question earlier, but it's certainly Mike Williams for me. Yeah, Mike Williams Same. for me too. Go back and yeah, look at his college down. tape. The dude is insanely talented. He makes me worry about Keenan Allen a little. Uh, uh, more Tyrell Williams. Not so much. For me. Yeah, because they're, Keenan Allen's only six foot, and Mike Williams is six four. They run completely different routes, and Mike Williams will be a huge red zone threat, though, with no real tight end to speak of. All right, there we go. Jayborn eighty one says two man keeper. He's keeping OBJ. Does he keep Michael Thomas or Kareem Hunt? If he keeps Hunt, he could have OBJ and Hunt, and then either Kamara or Barkley. If yes. he keeps Thomas, he will have OBJ, Thomas, and Kamara or Barkley. Uh, so what do I do? Uh-oh. So no matter what, he's getting Kamara or Barkley, it sounds like. So therefore, it do you want to like- start out with OBJ and Thomas or OBJ and Hunt? Give me OBJ, Hunt, and Kamara. Uh, yeah, give me OBJ and Hunt as well. Okay, yeah, for me it's 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 with Hunt for sure. I want I want two of those elite running backs. Yeah, I would totally be okay with that. Now, Michael Thomas, I do really like. I just have Kareem Hunt ranked a little bit over him in uh, just overall rankings. So I I think I'm leaning that way as well. But no matter what, great start, man. <laughs> can't can't really complain about that too much. Mushong says, how many targets do you like to see your starting wide receivers get? They start three with a flex in PPR. You know, if you can get eight to ten, I'm happy with that. Now, Grant, like you'll have games where Keenan Allen's getting like 17 targets or 
where Le- or where uh, Antonio Brown gets 17 catches. <laughs> Obviously, that's awesome. But if you can get, I don't know, 8 to 12 targets somewhere in there on a consistent basis, I love that. Yeah, same here. That's the kind of guys I'm looking to draft. Yeah, somewhere bes- between 7 to 10 catches per game. That's the guy yep. you want. I think 8 to 12 targets will get you there. And this is why I like Golden Tate so much, because he just seems to consistently get those kind of targets, and he seems to get those catches in a PPR, you know. 90-plus catches three straight years. Yep. What about you, Lucas? Yeah, I'm in agreement. Seven to seven to ten a, a game is just about perfect. All right. There we go. DBIW17 says, who should I flex week one in a standard, AP or Amari Cooper? Hands down, Amari Cooper for me. I would risk AP right here. You would play Adrian Peterson. I would play Adrian Peterson without even blinking, man. I think he's going to be getting that workload. To me, if you give Adrian Peterson a workload, he usually does some damage with. Um, that said, I, I just don't like Amari Cooper either. Um, I think I have to go Amari Cooper just purely based off of where you have to draft these guys at. If you're If you're really drafting guys – to where you're going to sit your third round pick and then play your tenth round pick over him, but just tells so me that you're catching not... Amari Cooper on the one week he doesn't give you a goose egg. <laughs> well, look, if you know, I think Amari Cooper has a better year this year. I think that whole team has a better year this year. I do want to see Adrian Peterson prove to me that he's going to come out and have a full good game against with the ones against the ones. And I want to see what the breakdown and usage of him and of the other running backs look like. Now, Mike, if Chris Thompson is back week one, are you still sticking with AP? I am. I think he'll be your first second down back. Chris Thompson will be your third down guy. All right. Uh, moving on, JRU21 says, would you take AB over Kamara? And this is the same guy who called in. It was a PPR. I would take AB over Kamara, but honestly, splitting hairs here. If you want an elite running back, you're going to be stuck with uh, guys like Jordan Howard and Joe Mixon in the second round. If you want one of the top guys, you have to take him there at the number. I believe you said you were at the number six spot. If AB's there, I'm taking him. Yeah. See, I feel like I, I kind of agree with that, but I feel like I can get a decent receiver on the backswing if I grab Kamara. No, oh, I totally agree. You're, you're not getting Antonio Brown, right? I mean, you're just if you're not getting him, you're not getting him. So, I mean, there's nobody comparable that's well, even so, at that. DeAndre Hawkins so, is somewhat at that level, but he's not going to make it back to you either. Yeah, so here's what I'm going to say, though. So would you rather have, like, Antonio Brown and – McCaffrey or would you rather have Kamara and Keenan Allen or Adams that's exactly what I'm saying so to me that's why I'm going to lean towards Kamara here because I feel like I'd rather have Kamara and Adams than say Brown and McCaffrey although I like McCaffrey a lot I just feel like Kamara is going to light him up one side down the other as far as the end of season stats of course everybody's staying healthy all right. Last Big boy. question here. Big boy 302. He's got two of them here. It's 12 team PPR. Uh, Corey Davis or Fitzgerald? Fitz for me? It's no question. It's Fitz. Yeah. Fitz like, these two good. shouldn't even these two shouldn't even be in the same conversation. Fact. Hey, and I don't think the next two guys either. Melvin Gordon, I absolutely love, but it's Melvin Gordon or Le'Veon Bell. Definitely Le'Veon Bell. It's definitely Le'Veon Bell. And, yeah, Melvin McGordon isn't even my favorite out of the Tier 2 running backs. Not even close, really. <laughs> All right, let me go check back our Sleeper Wire channel, see if we got any more questions there. And we do not. So that's going to wrap it up for this week's Mail Sack. Mail Sack 2 of the season. All right. Felt, felt good. Get we made it. in show form. I'm ready for some more call-ins, though. I need to. I need to hear y'all's questions. I yeah, need to... where's where's Curtis been? Where you at, man? You called in all the time. Curtis will be back. I, I almost have a hundred percent faith that Curtis will be back at week one. Hey guys, this, guess what? This is episode three hundred and ten for us. Wow. We wow. we never announced episode three hundred, which I feel like we missed an opportunity there. But three hundred and ten, which is Jeez. crazy. We've got 318,297 downloads. 
That's pretty Jeez. good. More than a thousand downloads an episode on average, and we've been getting uh, over, well over fifteen hundred downloads for the last um, for the last few weeks here on our episode. So that is awesome, <laughs> guys. Keep that coming. Subscribe and listen. Uh, leave us a nice review on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. Uh, get nice five star rating would be great. Leaving reviews really, truly does help out the show. As you guys know, or maybe you don't know, we are a charity here working towards the prevention and treatment of chronic Lyme disease. You can read about that on our website, sleeperwire.com. It is a new website. It's a completely revamped, super slick. Uh, our producer, Steve, did a fantastic job on it. Mike, Lucas, you got anything else before we do the uh, outro to say to our listeners here? I can't wait. I feel can't like I learned... Back. Oh, I was going to say, I feel like I learned something tonight, and that something is is to get Keelan Cole in every single draft that I possibly can. <laughs> I think Lucas might have drilled that into my brain. Something else might have happened. When you said at Dr. Kane, it just sounds weird, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound weird coming out when you know you're talking to Dirty Jobs? Yeah, so I, man, my I still want to say it every time. So I changed my Twitter to Dirty Jobs 21 while we were speaking. Oh, so you have a completely new Twitter with no followers. Uh, no, I don't believe so. I think you just changed your name and you still have the same followers because nothing else has changed. Oh, you so you changed the name, but you didn't change the at. Right. Part, no, it's at, no it's at Dirty Jobs 21. You can change that now? You sure can. Huh. No way. I swear. I just did it. I don't know. Let, let me look at your Twitter here. Hey, is this April 1st? What are I don't believe really, yeah, This, this sounds that. like uh, bullshit. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking yeah. at it. It says at Dirty Jobs 21. Mike D. He's full of it. I don't believe him. Dirty Jobs 21. If I search you, it says nothing there. But if I search Dr. Kane, yeah, your at is, I don't know how you change that. It does say Dirty Jobs. But I search <laughs> Dr. Kane 21 and I find it. That Maybe that's weird. something new that Twitter did. Is that now you can change the app part and... Huh, that's weird. Anyways, let's go ahead and wrap up this <laughs> Guys, like I said, sleeperwire.com slash draft kit. Our draft genius draft kit sponsored by Wooten's Apparel. Only twenty nine ninety nine. You get a ton of awesome stuff for those, you know, mostly like hundreds of thousands of people who are still drafting here over Labor Day weekend. Please go check that out. You can also go to sleeper or patreon.com slash sleeperwire and see all the great stuff that you can get there, including priority questions priority answers on the the live wednesday night mail sack show we answer your questions first you can join us 20 minutes early on the sunday blitz so you don't have to wait as we roll through 150 questions in an hour and 15 minutes you can join us 20 minutes early you can get a sleeper wire t-shirt a sleeper sleeper wire mug and a bunch of great stuff over at our patreon page follow us on twitter at sleeper wire show at Sleeperwire LBB at Dirty Jobs 21 and at Seymour Sleeperwire. So that's me, C M O R Sleeperwire. You can also follow us on the Sleeper app, formerly Sleeper Bot app, at Dirty Jobs, Sleeperwire LBB, and Professor Chris. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye.